the previous class, we have studied function of liver. If you have any doubt, if you have any doubt regarding the GIT system, Vivek sir has taught you GIT system, isn't it? If you have doubt, I can clear it, or you can uh, call me in Viber or WhatsApp or in the Gmail. I can answer your, I can answer your doubt. So in the previous class, we have studied function of liver. Today, we will study one of the primary function of liver is secretion of bile. So we have finished, we have finished the function of liver. So one of the primary function of liver is to secrete bile. So uh, what is the role of bile? Why, why we are studying the secretion of liver? So liver secrete bile. So bile is important function in, bile serves important functions in, bile plays an important role in fat digestion and absorption. And bile will digest fat and absorption. And it also removes, it also removes excretory waste product such as bilirubin. Bilirubin is produced from excessive breakdown of RBC. And that bilirubin is toxic to the body. It is, it is, not used in the body, so it should be removed from the body. And excess of cholesterol is also removed through bile. Let's just let's just summarize it. One of the primary function of liver is to secrete bile. Why why we have to study bile? Because bile serves important role or important function in fat digestion and absorption. Without bile, there is no digestion of fat and absorption of fat. And bile also removes excretory waste product such as bilirubin. Bilirubin is produced due to excessive breakdown of RBC and excess of cholesterol is also removed through bile. Now, today we'll study, today we'll study how bile will secrete, how bile is secreted from the liver and what is the role of bile in digestion of fat. Today we'll discuss two topic, that is how liver will secrete bile, how liver will secrete bile and what is the role of bile in digestion of fat and absorption of fat. In the previous class, we have already uh, discussed the anatomical physiology, anatomical physiology of liver. Bile is secreted, bile is secreted generally from the hepatocytes or liver cells. Uh, you, have, you have seen that liver cells, that is hepatocytes, at one side, it is in contact with the liver sinusoids, whereas in other side, it is contact with the liver bile canaliculi. Again, I am repeating it. <coughs> bile. Bile is produced from the hepatocytes or liver cells. And we have seen in the anatomical physiology that it is arranged. It is such arranged that at one side, at one side, it is exposed to liver sinusoids or it is exposed to blood, whereas in other side, it is exposed to bile canaliculi. Means, means it is, it is means that uh, functional unit of liver is liver lobule. Functional unit of liver is liver lobule. And this liver lobule is arranged in such a way that it is arranged in the central vein like spokes. And between these two liver cells, between these two liver cells is a bile canaliculi. And these hepatocytes, these hepatocytes will produce bile and it will pour this secretion into this bile canaliculi. And bile canaliculi, it will drain into this uh, terminal, terminal bile duct. Just, just, uh, just again, I'm repeating it. Bile is produced, bile is produced from the liver cells or hepatocytes and this bile is poured into this bile canaliculi and bile canaliculi it ultimately open into this terminal bile duct and terminal bile duct will open into the hepatic duct and hepatic duct it ultimately form the common bile duct when cystic duct combined with this hepatic duct to form common bile duct and this common bile duct it opens into the duodenum so bile is a digestive bile is a digestive juice formed continuously in the liver by hepatic cells and by epithelial cells lining the bile duct the hepatocytes 
one surface of which is adjacent to the blood sinusoids and other to the biliary canaliculi. And this will pick up some constituents of bile from the blood, such as bile pigments, synthesized from constituents such as bile cells. And it is poured into the bile canaliculi from where it ultimately goes to common hepatic duct, which join with cystic duct to form common bile duct. This is the diagram. This is the diagram of how the bile is secreted from the liver. Bile is secreted from the liver by the hepatocytes and it is poured into the bile canaliculi. This bile canaliculi open into the terminal duct and this terminal duct open into the hepatic duct that is right and the left hepatic duct. And this hepatic duct, this common hepatic duct, it ultimately joins the cystic duct to form common bile duct. And this common bile duct, while, while opening into the duodenum, it joins with the pancreatic duct to form hepatopancreatic duct. And it, and it opens into the ampulla of better, which is guarded, which is, which is guarded by spinster of Kodai. Again, I'm repeating it. Bile is produced from liver cells. Bile is produced from the liver cells and it is poured into the bile canaliculi because at one side, at one side it is exposed with the bile canaliculi, whereas on the other side it's exposed to blood. Means that in the in between the two cells, in between the two cells or between the two hepatic cells lies a bile canaliculi. So bile is secreted from the liver cells and it is poured into the bile canaliculi. This bile canaliculi opens into the terminal bile duct to form the common, to form the hepatic duct. This right and left hepatic duct join with the cystic duct to, to form a common bile duct. And this common bile duct join with the pancreatic duct to form hepatopancreatic duct and it opens into the duodenum. And in this opening, it is guarded by spinster of Kodai. And during interdiastic period, during interdiastic period, when the spinster of Oda is closed, the bile is directed via cystic duct to the gallbladder. And by the action of secretin hormone on the epithelial lining of ductules and duct, add secretion of watery solution of sodium and bicarbonate. Just, just again, I am repeating it. Uh, just uh, briefly, briefly, just I am explaining it. Bile is produced from the hepatocytes. Bile is produced from the hepatocytes and these hepatocytes, it will pour the bile into the bile canaliculi. From this bile canaliculi, it will move towards the, it will, it will move towards the, um, uh, through this bile canaliculi, it will move towards the interlobular septa, interlobular septa. And this bile canaliculi, it opens into the terminal bile duct. And this will open to the right and the left hepatic, right and the left hepatic duct. This right and the left hepatic duct join to form common hepatic duct. This common hepatic duct join the cystic duct that is from the gallbladder to form common bile duct. And this common bile duct, this common bile duct, it, it, it opens into the duodenum and before entering into the duodenum, it joins the pancreas to form hepatopancreatic duct. And this opening is guarded by spinster of Kodai. So, what, what is the stimulus? What is the stimulus for secretion of bile? What is the stimulus for secretion of bile? It is the bile salts. It is the bile salts available in the pool. It is the bile salts available in the circulating pool that will stimulate the secretion of bile. So bile is the primary stimulus for secretion of bile. If there are less, if there are less bile salts, then it will stimulate the liver to secrete more bile. So bile salts, bile salts are the primary stimulus for liver cells to secrete bile. And one, one hormone, one hormone that is secretin, one hormone that is secretin, which is produced in the duodenum. When acidic chyme, when acidic chyme comes in contact with the duodenum mucosa, when acidic chyme comes in contact with the duodenal mucosa, it will
will release secretin. It will release secretin. And this secretin is a hormone and it is carried by the blood and it will act on the ductules. It will act on the ductules and duct of bile to secrete water solution of sodium and bicarbonate. Again, I'm repeating it. Bile is secreted. Bile is secreted from the hepatocytes. Bile is secreted from the hepatocytes and the primary stimulus for bile to secrete is the bile salt. And uh, another a hormone called secretin. Secretin is produced. Secretin is produced in the duodenal mucosa when acidic chyme. When acidic chyme comes in contact with the duodenal mucosa, it will secrete secretin. And this secretin is a hormone. It is carried by the blood and it will act on the ductules and duct. It will act on the ductules and duct of bile and hepatic, hepatic duct to secrete watery solution of sodium and bicarbonate like that in the pancreatic secretion. We have already studied in the pancreatic juice secretion. This secretin will act on the ductules and duct. This secretin will act on the ductules and duct to secrete water solution of sodium and bicarbonate so that this water solution of sodium and bicarbonate, it will wash out. It will wash out the bile into this duodenum. And uh, in your MCQs, in your MCQs, it will be asked, what is cholerectics? What is cholerectics? Cholerectics are substances that increase the secretion of bile from liver are known as cholerectics. And cholerectics are bile salts. Again, in your MCQs, it is often asked, what do you mean by cholerectics? I know, what do you mean by cholerectics? Cholerectics are substances that increase the secretion of bile from liver and it is known as cholerectics. An example of cholerectics are bile salts. This bile, and during the interdigestive period, this bile, these bile are backflow, these bile, bile are backflow into the gallbladder through cystic duct, and in this gallbladder, this bile is stored. In this gallbladder, bile is stored and it is concentrated. Again, I am repeating it. During interdigestive, liver, liver continuously will produce bile. Liver continuously it will produce bile. And during, during meal or after, after half an hour, it will pour, it will pour this bile into this duodenum. But during interdigestive period, when there is no food, during interdigestive period, this the spinster foda is closed. And this bile will backflow. This bile will back backflow into the gallbladder and there it is stored and concentrated because gallbladder, gallbladder can store only 30 to 40 ml of bile. Gallbladder can store only, gallbladder can store only 30 to 40 ml of bile. But during 24 hour, but, 20, but during 24 hour period, liver can produce 450 ml. Liver can produce 450 ml of bile. So during interdigestive period, this bile is stored in the gallbladder and it gets concentrated. Bile gets concentrated. It means that much of the water, much of the water and solids get reabsorbed and remaining will be the bile salts, cholesterol, lecithin, phospholipid. Again, I'm repeating it. Bile is, bile is produced by the hepatocytes. Bile is produced by the hepatocytes and it is drained into the bile canaliculi, and this bile canaliculi terminate in the terminal bile duct. Terminal bile duct join the hepatic duct. This hepatic duct join the cystic duct to form common bile duct. And this common bile duct join the pancreatic duct to open into the, to form hepatopancreatic duct and open into the duodenum. And this duodenum is guarded by spinster of podi. During interdigestive period, <laughs> during interdigestive period, this spinster of ori, this the spinster of ori is closed, and bile bile gets backflow. Bile gets backflow, and it is stored into the gallbladder. And so the function of gallbladder, function of gallbladder is storage and concentration of bile. You may be asked, what is the function of gallbladder? Gallbladder is the storage and storage and concentration of bile, because gallbladder. Gallbladder can store only gallbladder can store only 30 to 40 ml of bile. But 
In the 24 hour period, liver can produce 450 ml of bile. So this extra amount of bile, it is stored into the liver and get concentrated. It means that, it means that much of the water, much of the water get reabsorbed. Much of the water get reabsorbed and electrolytes are reabsorbed. Remaining the remaining the remain, remaining are the concentrated remaining are the concentrated uh, bile salts, bilirubin, cholesterol, lecithin. During during meal during meal after half an hour, sphincter of oda is relaxed, and when fatty food reaches the duodenum, there occurs release of cholecystokinin, which causes contraction of gallbladder. Then bile is released into the duodenum along with pancreatic juice through the common opening ampulla of batter. Here it is saying, here it is uh, saying that how gallbladder, how gallbladder contraction and relaxation is regulated. Regulation of gallbladder contraction, how it is regulated? Gallbladder contraction is when gallbladder is contracted, bile is released from the gallbladder because bile is stored in the gallbladder. So how it is regulated? So we are studying, we are studying that how gallbladder contraction is regulated. We have studied in the pancreas, we have studied in the pancreas about hormone polycystokinin, CCK. So the stimulus for CCK, stimulus for CCK is the when fatty food, when fatty food or breakdown products of protein, when fatty food or breakdown products of protein is in contact with the duodenal mucosa, when fatty food or breakdown products of protein, when it come in contact with the duodenal mucosa, the duodenal mucosa will, will release polycystokinin. And this polycystokinin is a hormone. So it is carried by the blood and it will and it will cause the gallbladder contraction. It will cause the gallbladder contraction and relaxation of spinster of codi. When gallbladder is contracted, this bile is released from the gallbladder and 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 it, and it pour into the duodenum along with the pancreatic juice. Function of secretin. You have studied. You have already studied in the pancreas also. Function of secretin is the first of all how secretin is released when acidic chyme that is HCl. When acidic chyme comes in contact with the duodenal mucosa, duodenal mucosa will release secretin and this secretin it will act on the ductules ductules and ducts this secretin it will act on the ductules and duct to release watery solution of sodium and bicarbonate like that in the pancreas also we have studied in the pancreas that acinar cell acinar cell from acinar cells pancreatic enzyme from acinar cell pancreatic enzymes is released whereas from the duct cell Whereas from the duct cells, water solution of sodium and bicarbonate is released. And secretin will act on the ductules. Secretin will act on the ductules, whereas polycystokinin will act on the acinar cell to secrete pancreatic enzymes. Whereas secretin will act on the ducts and ductules to secrete water solution of sodium and bicarbonate. So that these all enzymes are washed out by the water and it is poured into the duodenum. Just, uh, just summarizing it, just I'm summarizing it. From the hepatocytes or liver cells, bile is secreted into the bile canaliculi and this bile canaliculi, again I'm repeating it, bile is produced from the hepatocytes and between the two hepatocytes is a bile canaliculi. So bile is poured into the bile canaliculi and the, from this bile canaliculi, it opens into the terminal bile duct. Terminal bile duct opens into the hepatic duct. And this hepatic duct joins. This hepatic duct joins with the cystic duct to form common bile duct. And this common bile duct opens into the duodenum. Before opening into the duodenum, it joins with the pancreatic duct to form common hepatopancreatic duct and it is opened into the duodenum, which is guarded by spinster of odi. Now, during interdigestive period, during interdigestive period, when there is no food, when there is no food, then this bile is, this bile is backflow into the gallbladder through cystic duct. And in the gallbladder, it is stored. 
in the gallbladder bile is stored and bile is concentrated in the gallbladder so function of bile, function of gallbladder is function of gallbladder is the storage of bile and concentration of bile <coughs> this uh, because gallbladder can store only 30 to 40 ml of bile this gallbladder can store only 30 to 40 ml of bile but during the 24 hour period liver can secrete or liver can produce 450 ml of bile so this extra amount of bile this extra amount of bile is stored in the gallbladder and stored in the gallbladder and this and in the gallbladder much of the water much of the water and electrolytes get reabsorbed much of the water and electrolyte get reabsorbed concentrating the remaining that's concentrating the remaining means concent concentrating the bile salts cholesterol lecithin and uh, how how the gallbladder will be regulated or how the gallbladder contraction will occur when gallbladder is contracted in this will this will release bile when gallbladder is contracted it will release bile and it is poured into the duodenum so what is the stimulus for contraction of gallbladder one hormone that is cholecystokinin cck cholecystokinin cholecystokinin is, cholecystokinin is released from the duodenal mucosa so when fatty food when fatty food or breakdown products of protein when in come in contact with the duodenal mucosa the duodenal mucosa will release cholecystokinin again when fatty food or breakdown products of protein come in contact with the duodenal mucosa this duodenal mucosa will release cholecystokinin and this cholecystokinin will act on the gallbladder means it will cause contraction of gallbladder and relaxation of sphincter of podi so that content of gallbladder is poured into the duodenum uh, and function of secretin is secretin is produced secretin is produced from the duodenal mucosa means what is the stimulus for production of secretin when acidic chyme when acidic chyme comes in contact with the duodenal mucosa it will release secretin secretin is a hormone so it is carried by the blood and it will act on the ducts and ductules ducts and ductules of bile and the hepatic duct to release water solution of sodium and bicarbonate and this water solution of sodium bicarbonate it will wash out the bile juice it will wash out the bile juice into the duodenum and these are the composition of bile these are the composition of bile one is primary composition is the water primary composition is the water bile salts bilirubin cholesterol fatty acid lecithin sodium potassium calcium chloride bicarbonate you know you you need not to remember you need not to remember the concentration of all these just remember what are the constituents of bile what are the constituents of bile constituents of bile are the constituents of bile are the water bile salts bilirubin cholesterol fatty acid lecithin sodium potassium calcium chloride bicarbonate here you can see that here you can see that bile salts get concentrated bile salts get concentrated in the gallbladder because here you can see that in the liver bile its concentration or its amount is 1.1 gram per deciliter but in the gallbladder it is 6 gram per deciliter when you are when you are asked in your exam write about the composition of bile write about the composition of bile and how how the bile is separated from the liver then you just write then you just write the composition no need to write no need to write about the concentration because you will always forget the concentration concentration of the bile you just remember what are the constituents of bile so Constituent of bile are the water, bile salts, bilirubin, cholesterol, fatty acid, lecithin, sodium, potassium, calcium, chloride, bicarbonate. You will be asked, uh, write down the regulation, write down the regulation of gallbladder contraction. So, how the gallbladder is contracted? Because in the gallbladder, bile is stored. In the gallbladder, bile is stored and bile gets concentrated in the gallbladder. So, one hormone called cholecystokinin, which is released from the duodenal mucosa when come in contact, when duodenal mucosa come in contact with the fat, 
or breakdown products of protein. This duodenal mucosa will release cholecystokinin, and this cholecystokinin it will act on the gallbladder and it will cause contraction of gallbladder and relaxation of sphincter of odi. And another hormone that is secretin. Secretin is again produced from the duodenal mucosa and stimulus for secretion secretin is the when acidic chyme when acidic chyme comes in contact with the duodenal mucosa it will release secretin and this secretin it will act on the ductules and ducts of bile and hepatic ducts to secrete water solution of sodium bicarbonate and this water solution of sodium bicarbonate it will wash out the bile it will wash out the bile into the duodenum Again, just, uh, just I'm repeating it. Bile is, produced. bile is produced from the liver cells and between the two liver cells is the bile canaliculi. So bile is poured into the bile canaliculi. This bile canaliculi, it joins the terminal bile duct. Terminal bile duct joins the hepatic duct and this hepatic duct joins the cystic duct to form common bile duct. And this common bile duct join the pancreatic duct to form hepatopancreatic duct and it opens into the duodenum and into in the duodenum it is guarded by spinster of odi and this spinster of odi is always closed always closed when fatty food when fatty food comes in contact with the duodenal mucosa then when fatty food comes in contact with the duodenal mucosa then it will release cholecystokinin and this cholecystokinin it will cause contraction of gallbladder and relaxation of spinster of odi and this bile is released from gallbladder into the duodenum and function of bile is function of bile is digestion of fat digestion of fat and absorption of fat this function of bile is the digestion of fat and absorption of fat without bile when there is no bile then there will be no digestion of fat and the when there is no bile, then there will be no digestion of fat, and the stool contain and the stool contain much of the fat. So fatty stool, there will be fatty stool called steatoria, steatoria, bile salts. So what are the bile salts? In biochemistry also you have studied bile salts. Bile salts are sodium and potassium salts of bile acid. Bile salts are sodium and potassium salts of bile acid conjugated with either glycine or toluene. Bile salts are simply bile salts are sodium and potassium salts of bile acid. Bile salts are sodium and potassium salts of bile acid conjugated with either glycine or taurine. So bile acids are of two types. Bile acids are of two types, primary and secondary. Primary bile acids are folic acid and quinodeoxypolic acid and these are synthesized from cholesterol. This is not important, this is not necessary uh, in physiology, just we are studying what are bile acids, bile acids, what are bile acids and what are bile salts, because bile salts, in, bile salts important function is emulsification of fat, bile salts important function is the emulsification of fat and absorption of fat. So we are studying bile salts, in biochemistry we'll, you'll, you'll study detail about bile salts. So primary bile acids, primary bile acids are the cholic acid and quinodeoxycholic acid and bile salts are the sodium and potassium salts, sodium and potassium salts of cholic acid and uh, cholic acid and quinodeoxycholic acid conjugated with either glycine or taurine. The conjugation of bile acids, in the liver, bile acids are conjugated with either glycine or taurine forming conjugated bile acids the conjugated bile acids, namely glycopolic acid and taurocholic acid, form bile salts in combination of combination with sodium and potassium. This is the diagram. This is the diagram showing how the bile salts are formed. This is the diagram showing how the bile salts are formed. So bile salts are formed from cholesterol. Bile salts are formed from cholesterol, or bile acids are formed from cholesterol. So primary bile acids are folic acid and primary bile acids are folic acid and quinodeoxycholic acid and secondary bile acids are the lithopolic acid and deoxycholic acid and these bile acids primary bile acids folic acid and quinodeoxycholic acid conjugate with glycine or taurine to form conjugated bile acids that is glycopolic acid these are called the 
bile acids. These are called the bile acids. When sodium or potassium salts, when sodium and potassium combine with the conjugated bile acids, then they form bile salts. So bile salts are bile salts are bile salts are sodium glycocholate, sodium glycocholate, and sodium taurocholate. These are the bile salts. And primary function of bile salts is emulsification of fat, means breakdown of fats and then absorption of fat, absorption of fat into the duodenal mucosa. So function of bile salts are, bile salts help in digestion and absorption of fat, that is emulsification of fat. Emulsification of fat means breaking of large fat into smaller droplets and emulsification is prerequisite for the action of pancreatic lipase. When these fat are broken down into smaller particles, that is fat droplets, then pancreatic lipase, it will act on it and it will digest to form fatty acid and glycerol. So uh, today we have studied, today we have studied function of bile and how the bile is synthesized, how the bile is synthesized from the liver and how it is circulated in the blood. Again, we, today we have studied how bile is synthesized from the liver and how it is carried, how it is transported, how it is transported into the duodenum. And what is the role? What is the role of polycystokinin and secretin? Again, I am repeating it. Bile is generally from the hepatocytes. They will secrete bile and it is poured into the bile canalically and secretin. Secretin, it will act on the ductules and duct to release water solution of sodium bicarbonate. So the composition of bile is, so the composition of bile is water, water, bile salts, cholesterol, lecithin, phospholipid, you know, sodium, potassium, chloride, bicarbonate. Again, bile is produced from the hepatocytes and it is poured into the bile canaliculi, whereas secretin, it will act on the ductules and duct to release more water, water solution of sodium and bicarbonate. So the composition of bile is, composition of bile is bile water, bile salts, cholesterol, lecithin, phospholipid, a fatty acid, sodium, potassium, chloride, bicarbonate, calcium. And these are carried by the bile canaliculi and it is poured into the hepatic duct. Hepatic duct join the cystic duct to form common bile duct. And this common bile duct join with the pancreatic duct to form the hepatopancreatic duct and it is poured into the duodenum. And how, how the polycystokinin it will cause the contraction of gallbladder. For, for the stimulus for polycystokinin, when fatty food or uh, when fatty food or breakdown products of protein, when come in contact with the duodenal mucosa, it will release polycystokinin. And this polycystokinin it will cause the gallbladder contraction and relaxation of spinster of podi. When gallbladder is contracted, it will release bile into the duodenum. So, uh, and during the interdigestive period, the function of gallbladder is the one is the storage. Function of gallbladder is the one is the storage and concentration of bile because gallbladder can store only 30 to 40 ml of bile. But during the 24 hour period, liver can produce 450 ml of bile. So extra amount of bile is stored or extra amount of bile get concentrated in the gallbladder. When, when, when there is need of, when, when we consume excessive fat, when you consume more amount of fat, then more bile is needed. So this concentrated bile, it will act on the fatty, act on the fat to cause emulsification of fat, that is breakdown of fat into fatty acid and glycerol. If you have any question you can ask or you can just contact me.